And now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing. This is in the lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with white trim, weighing 132 and one quarter pounds. His professional record, 18 victories. With nine knockouts to his credit and five losses, he comes to us from right here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, the former USBA lightweight champion, John the Eastern Beast Brown. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, trimmed with white letters, and weighing 133 pounds. His professional record, 48 bouts, 45 victories, with 24 knockouts and only four losses. He comes to us from Silmar, California, presenting the former WBC super featherweight champion of the world, Gabriel Rella. Okay, gentlemen, you received my instructions. Let's have a good clean bout. Listen to my commands. Touch gloves. John Brown, Jim, spent most of his youth in a series of foster homes. Gabe Rellis, when he came north from Mexico at the age of 11, had never worn a pair of shoes. That's what fighters are made of. That's what this fight is made of, and it will be a fight. Two very tough fighters who are expected to engage each other at close quarters for much of the bout. That, of course, was the voice of HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. We're joined at ringside by two-time world champion Roy Jones, Jr. Walk the head. Come on, let him go. Come on, let's get out. Come on, watch out. John Brown lost a decision to Angel Manfredi in Madison Square Garden just a month and two days ago. He stepped in to take this spot vacated by Leha, says that he had remained in training following the Manfredi fight, so this is right in his natural rhythm. How tough to come back uh, one month following a fight like the one he had against Angel in Madison Square Garden, Roy? Well, it's kind of tough sometimes, especially if you get a win. But he had a loss, so he's looking to come back and get revenge for that loss. So he probably went right back to the gym because a loss should have made him upset and made him hungry again. And that's a five-time world champion, Roy. Five-time. Excuse me, Roy. I was thinking of the weight classes, but you know I should have said three there because it's 160, 168, 175 falling well short of giving you sufficient credit. But that's okay. The rest of the world knows. And already we've got the toe-to-toe -to -toe action with heavy contact on both sides. Yeah, neither of these guys like to back up. I don't think they have reverse. They like a 747. The only way they're going to back up is to get something to push them back. And if you look at Brown's relatively small upper body and wonder how he can take punches so well, just check out the legs. This guy has a strong base. Watch your head, John. The way Rose is fighting Brown, he obviously believes that he's stronger than him and that he will wear him down and get to him as the fight goes on. Well, as the trainer Joe Goosen telling us, hey, I'd love to fantasize that Gabe is going to stick the jab, move, and do all the kinds of things that might give him a big tactical advantage in the fight, but I know the way Gabe likes to fight against somebody who'll come at him. He's going to get shoulder to shoulder with him and give him all the action he can take. That's what's going to happen here. And that's just the way Gabe is. Gabe's been that way since the first day, and he'll be that way when he finishes. Come on, let him go, let him go. No point in trying to change the personality of the fighter. Well, let's go into the body. Brown has great inside punching technique. Loves to pop his opponent with short, straight, right and left hands inside at close quarters. Well, we mentioned that this is another visit to the up and down career of Gabriel Wellis. Once regarded as a great prospect, he's held a world title. But Larry Merchant, he's had his bad moments too. Yeah, he's one of those fighters of whom it can be said that if he didn't have any bad luck, he wouldn't have any luck at all. Eight years ago, when he was considered a brilliant prospect, this exchange with Lem Franklin resulted in a broken elbow 
He has five bolts in that elbow right now. And then, of course, after he won the title, this fight against Jimmy Garcia, after which you may remember Jimmy Garcia died. And then coming in to finish, Arturo Gatti walks into that left hook. Knocked out. And the preceding round, Gabe had had Gotti going, and he hurt Gotti in that round before taking the left hook that settled the fight. Right now, Relis' right arm is three inches shorter than his left as a result of that operation on his elbow. He cannot straighten it out. Took two separate surgeries to properly place the screws that stabilized the elbow and... It's changed him somewhat as a fighter, made him even more of an in-fighter because he can't extend the long right-hand punches. John Brown has five losses in his career, but they are all to tough, big-time fighters. Frequently in those fighters' hometowns. Kind of guy you hate to see coming. Yeah, because you know he's more likely going to be there all night, and he's going to fight with everything he has. There's the right hand inside, which is Brown's main weapon. It did some damage against Manfredi, and he has landed it several times in the early going here against Ruelas. I don't know how they can avoid knocking heads and drawing blood before this is over, Roy. I don't think they care about knocking heads and drawing blood. That's what they like. Watch out. John Brown, born right here in Atlantic City. Watch your head, John. Come on. Became one of those children of the child welfare system in New Jersey, raised in 12 different foster homes. And sometimes in his adult life, he's lived homeless, and he lands a big right and a left against Gabriel Ellis, and has Ellis going in the middle of the second. Well, Gabe was hurt bad by those punches. Uh, he wobbled. This is, this is John Brown's game, and he's doing better at it than Gabe Rellis is. Well, that's a hard left-hand shot. Step back, step you can back. see the impact of Brown's punches inside, and as I told you, he's got great technique for showing those, throwing those short, damaging blows inside. Straight right hand. You've got to stop John Brown from throwing the straight right hand somehow. Well, first of all, fighting in close, he can't stop him because he's so short, and that's the best place for him to be. He has to be there to land punches. Gabe, on the other hand, could go outside and land punches and get out of his distance, but Gabe doesn't like to fight like that. And that's where that stubbornness comes into play, and it hurts him sometimes if he's stubborn. You see Gabe motioning Brown, come on back come in. Back, step back, step back. And it's hard to imagine Ruelas gains from pinning his back against the ropes on, and standing start, inside start. a phone booth with John Brown. Well, he's hoping that his experience will take over and that he'll catch John with something big. And uh, because he's been in so many more fights, Time. he's hoping that he can you know, be the better fighter throughout the duration. In a little bit. Can you yeah. give me that end slow grade right now? Yeah. Right. You can't sit on the ropes. You know, you got to be a little bit smarter than that, Gabe. Yeah. All right, you got to keep your punches short and your head down. Mm -hmm. All right, you got to go to, you got to box a little bit. You got to use the middle break. Right. Right. John, I need you to set, I need to set your shots up, okay? All right. Don't, don't, don't be impatient. Don't be impatient. The okay. shots are there. He's there for the take. All right, I need yeah. to take a hand. Early in the round, Brown shook Relis up. Couple of hard punches right there. The right and the left that drove Rellis back, wobbled him. Sometimes you can be too tough for your own good. Rellis was too tough for out. his own good in that round. And you may have seen the copy box numbers showing that Brown has thrown more and landed more at close range in the first two rounds. And you heard Joe Goosen stating the obvious to Gabe. You can't fight him like this. And Willis comes right back out, engages the man in center ring, gets hurt with the right hand. That's just how his elbow is broken, his right elbow is broken, just as Brown had him pinned right there. 
Brown has to be careful not to punch himself out here because he's got the left of spear. And I don't think he's big enough to keep trading punches with Gabe, but he's getting confident. There were a couple times against Manfredi when Brown would mount long, sustained assaults, and then he needed time to recover afterward. I gave. I think that might have hurt John a little bit. Keep him up, John. Keep the punches up. Come on, punch out, punch out. Where would you find room to box against this guy, Roy? I mean, <laughs> yeah, Joe asked him, Joe Goosen asked him, maybe you could box a little bit. How do you make room to box? Well, right, Gabe right, could push him off the back, back. and use his feet to box a little bit, but Gabe doesn't want him to. Right now, it's that was a jab right there before the John got close, on, and he's having room. But Gabe doesn't want to do that. Gabe wants to fight. He Gabe, wants to do this. Gabe is game. Gabe loves to fight. That's what cost him the fight in the Gotti fight, because he's so gamey, he loves to fight. Yeah, he gave Gotti the opportunity to come back on him. That's right, he never should have gotten that close to Gotti. Off the head, off the head. Come on, watch out. Had the same experience against Azuma Nelson. Great, step back, step back from him. If he moves and boxes more, maybe he has a better chance in that fight. Well, if he moves and boxes more, he's not Gabe Royce. That's not who he is. Watch that shoulder, man. Watch that shoulder. Let's go. Uppercut lands for Ruelas. Brown comes back with a solid right hand. Come on, walk out, walk out. Come on, guys. Let him go, let him go. Freddie complained that John Brown held his arms all night. And you can see Brown's tendency to reach out and pin the opponent's arms at some times when he's inside. Well, he's a shorter fighter. He has to do this, Jim. That's where he's a better deal. Closer look at John Brown now. There you see who he is. 12 foster homes from the age of 11 to 17 or so. Just five weeks ago, he lost that very rugged fight with Angel Manfredi. He fits in, okay? Wonderful. You can control him whatever way you want, but don't jam yourself. Okay. So I need you to take a half a step back to throw your shot, okay? All right, you keep moving them backwards, but you need to give yourself to show him. You gotta be a lot busier, man. This is the fourth round, Greg, coming yeah. up? Yeah. This is the fourth yeah. round. It's only a 10 rounder now. Mm -hmm. Okay, we gotta win some of these rounds. We gotta win some of these rounds. The gloves are wet on there. Okay. Dusan making the point to Tony Orlando. John Brown comes out firing grenades. Wellis's corner being categorical with their fighter about the status of the fight. Joe Goosen suggesting to Gabe that he hasn't won any rounds. Harold Letterman agrees. Anytime John Brown expends a lot of energy, Gabe comes right back and immediately attacks the body. That's where you see that experience come into play. Watch your head, John. Well, 
it's awfully tough when you get yourself into a scorecard hole against a guy who's never been knocked down or out. I mean, unless Willis gets a lot busier, Roy, he's banking on a late-round knockout to win this fight. And how are you going to get a late-round knockout against a guy with Brown's past experience? Come on, get the hands I don't know, but I guess Gabe probably oh, believes oh, that there's a oh. first time for everything. Hey, hey. <laughs> Come on, I'm not going to tell you again. Let's go. Watch your head, John. Watch your head. Especially, especially against a fighter who is eating roaches, caterpillars, lance, land crabs, to show that he can survive anything. Oh, slow, slow. With a martial arts instructor here in Atlantic City named Mal Perkins, John Brown says that he has frequently gone into the swamplands around here, lived for extended periods of time, and lived only off the food that he could find in those areas to demonstrate to himself that it's possible to do it. Thus, as Larry says, the diet of cockroaches and land crabs, which he claims to have subsisted on for periods of time. Brown's suggestion, hey, if I can live eating cockroaches and land crabs, I'm too tough for these guys. I don't know about too tough, because he's able to real tough customer here. Yep. Quick! Step back, step back, step back. And as round four has progressed, Brown has looked a little arm weary, not able to deliver those sharp snapping punches that we saw earlier in the fight. On, punch, and Willis, on, as Roy Jones pointed out, continues to focus when he gets his chances on Brown's body. Left uppercut landed for Brown and snapped Willis's head back. And just as I said John Brown was punched out, he came back with a furious assault. You understand? You understand? You understand? Okay, let's go. So a little horror show at the end of round four, and we remind you that on Halloween night, we've got Prince Nassim Hamed taking on Wayne McCullough of Ireland. Hamed from England, McCullough from Ireland. Great card, junior featherweight champion Biani Bungu of South Africa taking on Danny Romero the same night. Romero coming up to 122 pounds. Come on, but I hear that. It's okay. John, John, look at me. John, John. John Brown finishing the round in style. Something to give the officials to remember. Perhaps the edge in that round. In round four, Willis had his best round yet by CompuBox numbers, landing 28 of 65 punches. But Brown was 36 of 73. And now Brown begins round five with a vicious assault. And he landed some thunderous punches of old Gabriel Willis' head. Great! No punching. Let him go, let him go. Willis's brother Raphael, who took a fearsome beating about six weeks ago from Costa Zoo, seems for the Let's moment go. to be in retirement. And if Gabe Wellis were to take a beating from John Brown here tonight, it is difficult to imagine what other opportunities might be so attractive as to keep him in the sport. Uh, Raphael is now taking classes at UCLA, high school graduate. Gabe looking forward to a career not as a trainer in boxing, but as a manager. And if this fight keeps going this way, He'll be managing fighters sooner than he expected. Yeah, because Jerry Brown is getting confident here. And uh, if Gabe doesn't do something to stop the confidence, he's going to have a long night. Come on, turn around. Oh, yeah, he turned around. Come on, step back, John. Come on, let him go. not have faced this kind of physical warfare <laughs> against Jesse James Leha. That would have been a different kind of fight. Yeah, much different fight. I think Jesse James is more of a boxer. Okay. Boxer John and left hooker. Come on, two punches. Come on, come on, let's go. Brown is an inside warrior who defends on the straight right hand. Relis, you can see, firing to the body to try to take some of the start out of Brown's punches. I think a lot of people underestimate John Brown. Well, that's what he thinks. He thinks everybody underestimates him. 
I don't think Gabe expected him to be this tough of a competitor, especially inside, because this is Gabe's fight normally. All right, break. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Step back. Step back. Get a lot on Brown's shoulder must come from Wellis's face. He's cut inside his mouth, Jim. Is that it? Another brutal right hand. Step back. Step back. Step back. Step back. He just had his way against Gabe. This is very uncharacteristic for Gabe Willis. Step back, guys. Well, he's taking an awful lot of punishment. Willis is all the way through the ropes. Come on, guys. Let's, let's, let's. And Willis is hurt. Willis is hurt bad. Willis is trying to demonstrate to Tony Orlando that Brown is tackling him and bulling him through the ropes. Yeah, Willis is kind of not seeming to be as aggressive as he normally is, and I think everything is hurting him now because over the period of time, all these big punches take their toll. What I tell you? Get back there. Get back there. And suddenly, Gabriel Ellis looks like a fighter who has taken too many shots. He can't get his balance now. So, let me see that lip. Let me see that lip. Come here. Gabriel, look, you're not even trying to box him at all. At least catch him with a left hook to the head and body coming in. You're dipping to your right. You're not doing anything on your left side. You're playing his game and not winning it. If you're going to win that game that he's playing right there, you've got to throw three times as many punches and you're not doing it. All right, Gabriel, you win this fight. This is six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You got five rounds here. You got to do it now. This is where you got to take over from this half of the fight. Here's how John Brown came into the ring tonight, perhaps thinking this was October 31st, not October 24th. But he does call himself the Beast. Ready to go. Round five by CompuBox numbers, a wipeout. Ruelas, five of 33. Brown, 26 of 43. Let's get the Joe Goosen again giving honest advice to his fighter. And you wonder at what point Goosen might begin to think that the better part of valor is to stop the fight on behalf of his fighter. Harold, how do you have it through five? Jim, I've got it five to nothing, 50 to 45, John Brown. I mean, there's no question that the clean shots are being landed by John Brown, those right hands, and I, and I really believe that's what the judges are seeing. There's the left hook. Shot by Ruelas, but John Brown's definitely dominating with those hard right hands. But Jim, watch what Gabe Ruelas is doing oh, right there. Those are kidney out. shots. Okay. They're behind the back. They really, really, Tony Orlando's got to put a stop to that because it could be very dangerous. Gabe keeps pounding John Brown in the kidneys. It's totally illegal. I have it four rounds to one. Great. Step back. Step back, please. You step gave Ruelas the fourth? I believe I did, yes. You heard Joe Goosen ask the fighter to give him a left hook when Brown is coming in. The problem is, is that John is way ahead of Gabe Willis. Gabe is reacting off of what uh, John Brown is doing, so he's second in the fight. As long as John Brown stays out in front of him, he's going to beat him because he's quicker than Gabe. See, right there, when Gabe gets off first, he can land punches, but he's usually not getting off first. See there? Come on, two hands, both of you. Two hands. Does Gabe look to you to be in slow motion, Roy? Well, this, this is Gabe's normal fight. He's always slow like this. He's not a speed type fighter. He's a later fighter. He's one of those guys who's mediocre, but he's mediocre throughout the whole the duration of the fight. So he doesn't really look in slow motion to me, but he's very flat tonight. But this could come from underestimation of an opponent. Well, he added 16 pounds since yesterday's weigh-in, which indicates to me that he had to take a lot of weight off on, to make go, weight. Go. 16 Let's pounds of water and food in just on, 30 hours. Let's keep him up. Johnny, watch your head, man. And another assault by Brown. And Ruelas almost down. And now he is. Four, five. First knockdown of the fight. Seven. Took a lot of accumulated punishment to uh, produce it. And now Wellis is going to face a finishing attempt by John Brown. And Brown goes to the body to set it up. And if he doesn't punch back, the fight will be stopped. But he... Tony Orlando, as you can see, focusing attention on Wellis. Right, step back, step trying to back, judge back. his ability to continue in the fight. Over there. Well, Gabe, I'll tell you what, Gabe, you better you better let it all hang out this round. He's gonna come after you hard, man. You didn't box 
awesome. You didn't do anything I told you to do, Gabe. But what you got to do now is you got to win the fight. And how are you going to do that? Can you win this fight? Listen, Can you? How are you going to do it? Your fighter's taking a lot of hate. Hey, listen. All right. Hey, that's what this game's about. Please, I know if it, I, right, I've right. stopped fights before when I think he's hurt. Right. Uh, he, he, if I'll he don't, yeah, that takes it, Tony. Right. You know, that's listen. The, listen. Tony. Like I watch it. Exactly. Oh, it takes too much. This, is, this right. knockdown right. came right. as an accumulation right. of punches. Yeah. No single punch okay. seemed to do it. Relis just needed some place to yeah, rest. No. Strong body Second attack, down. Down. quicker hands to the Blue head. Corner. Blue corner. Corner. Brown is dominating oh, yeah. oh, yeah. a once very good That's fighter. Up. Yeah, he's worn Gabe down. Now, the accumulation of punches are short, on, starting to show on, right? an effect on Gabe. The punches that were not hurting Gabe early in the fight are starting to hurt Gabe now. Painful to watch, guys. There are few people in the sport that you like more or who more deserve your affection than Gabriel Ruelas, who has been a prince of a person ever since we first met him a dozen, well, no, 10 years ago. Both he and his brother. Terrific people. He's still trying to show his toughness, but I don't like to see this type of toughness. He's taking a banger here. The referee is very close to stopping this fight. You can see him study Gabrielis's face. They play throw one push to 12. You don't want to see any fighter take 10 rounds of this. I hate to use this metaphor, but he looks more like Jimmy Garcia, as much like Jimmy Garcia in their fight. I'm sure we've all been thinking the same thing. It's a chilling and painful thing to say, but yes, the punishment he's taking, not unlike the punishment he dealt out to Jimmy Garcia on May 6, 1995. You couldn't watch this fight without making that connection if you were there at ringside that night as the three of us were. The referee's watching very close. He's not getting hit to the head a whole lot, Jeff, but he's not fighting back. That's why I think That's the fight should be He's not fighting back at all. He doesn't show any aggression. He doesn't show nothing to go, make us think he wants to win this fight. You know? He's not doing anything to show us that he really wants to win this fight. Go, go, go. That's the most aggression he's been able to show in the seventh round. That's because he's hurting. The accumulation is worn down, and he's just, he's just not out to win this fight tonight. All right, break. Step back. Step back. This is his 50th professional fights. Well, it's a nice round number. And he's absorbed some punishment along the way. But your observation earlier, Jim, that he seemed to be in slow motion seems more and more the case as the fight goes on. His hands just don't have that kind of quickness that he once did. Time! Time! Round seven ends on a sharp left hand from Brown. Willis bending over as though trying to find some flexibility in his legs. All right, Gabe, that was, you know, you can't sit in the corner. All right, you feel better though now? You got your strength back? Huh? You landed a couple good shots here, but you've got to get busy. Tony, you see what he's doing. You see what he's doing. He's, he's playing possum a little bit. He's trying to catch him with a good one. He's cognizant. I'm watching you, Gabe, though. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, he's playing the game right now in the corner. You know, he's trying to let the kid shoot out some steam. Let me have that water, please. Right here. Well, give me a tally, Lano, right there. Right. All right, Gabe. Uh -huh. I know, try to box him a little bit, man, see if you can catch yeah. him in. But, you know, you really have a long way to go. Yeah. And, uh, here you come. Here you come. Yeah. All right, all right. Okay. Take it down. Take the bucket away. You got to knock him out. Knock him right out. Oh, if Ferellis is playing possum, he's a very wounded possum. Hey, it's one thing to play possum. It's another thing when the opponent lands 41 out of 66 punches, all power shots. That's what happened in the last round. Oh, there's another brutal uppercut. 
quickly. Uh, Harold, how do you have it through seven? Jim, I got it 70 to 62, seven to nothing. John Brown, I mean, I think he's pitching a shutout. Personally, I would stop the fight, no question. I mean, certainly if Orlando's in a tough spot, you pull the doctor in because Gabriel Ellis is just not punching back, just like Roy Jones said. He's laying on the ropes and taking a terrible beating. Very, very close to a 10-8 round, that seventh round. I called it 10-9, but certainly could have been 10-8. Step back, step back, step back. Ruelas reaching right. You can see that Brown still has leverage on his punches. John Brown just physically dominating the fight from the opening bell. The good thing is that John Brown is not a bigger puncher as Gabe Ruelas was in his day. So that's enough. That's, oh, that's just great. enough. Yeah. That is enough. Tony Orlando finally does the obvious, and John Brown has his victory. For Gabriel Ellis and the people around him, much to consider from what happened here. So after years of falling just short against big-name fighters, John Brown gets the victory he was looking for over a former champion and one of the better-known fighters in his weight class. For two very tough, strong fights, against tough, strong opponents in the last five weeks. He's earned some shots at making some money. He thought he'd won the fight against Manfredi. He left no doubt here tonight. Gabrielis, his wife Leslie, How you feel? his two sons Diego and Rodrigo, ages four and one, potentially a comfortable life in Southern California. We will always remember them with love and affection. This was a wipeout, round two. Ruelas first hurt by John Brown, and this was the kind of two-fisted inside assault which Brown was able to mount and sustain throughout the fight. Round five, Willis pulled through the ropes by Brown, shaking his head in bewilderment. Round six, and I believe this will be the knockdown that came on a series of punches from various angles until Willis simply couldn't stand up anymore. And then round eight, the brutal assault that ultimately convinced Tony Orlando that his judgment was better than Joe Goosen's as to what to do with the remainder of the fight. And as we were uh, showing those highlights, Jim, promoter Dan Goosen came over to us and said about both Rellis brothers, they had great careers. And now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Tony Orlando has to step in and call a halt to the bout. The official time, one minute, nine seconds of round number eight. The winner by knockout victory, nobody works harder and trains harder than John the Eastern Beast Brown. Final punch stat numbers will provide further ball. evidence of the one-sidedness of this fight. As you can see, Brown landed almost three times as many punches as Ruelas, most of them hard shots at close range, 500 punches thrown in less than eight complete rounds and a connect percentage of 52%, all of which conspires to bring a lot of pain to Gabe Ruelas in the fifth and probably the final loss of his 50-fight professional career. So now we get ready for the main event. Once again on camera with HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. Larry, uh, David Reed, as we pointed out several times in the telecast, was the only American Olympian to win a gold medal in 1996. But now, at this stage of his professional career, he's fallen behind two of his Olympic classmates 